So this is part two of helping mindful teachers, particularly most likely newish mindfulness teachers, to build confidence. So in the last episode, I gave some act strategies for cultivating confidence, acceptance and commitment training, uh, evidence-based approaches. And I'm going to continue uh, in that in that route, but helping you be even more practical. This is the Teach Mindfulness Podcast, and my name is Shamash. Okay, so this is a good one, and I think you know this one, but I think you appreciate the reminder as well. Break down the big steps into baby steps. So let's give an let's give an example. Let's say you want to teach a mindfulness class, and you've never d- done it before, and you want to set it up on Zoom, and you just feel very unconf- unconfident about doing the whole process. Well, maybe the first step will be to just set up a Zoom account. Maybe you don't have one, or maybe to pay a little bit of the monthly fee so you've got a proper a Zoom account where you can use it for more than 45 minutes. That could be a baby step. So you just need to go to the website and pay that small fee, and you've taken the first step. And you'll find that after you've taken the action, you feel a little bit different. You may actually feel a little bit more confident. And even if you don't, you've made that tiny step, and then you can look at the next step. So whatever your big goal is, you can break it down into lots and lots of little actions. And then you take those little actions and you enjoy any sense of confidence that may come from them. Secondly, set smart goals, goals that are specific, meaningful, and hopefully they'll be meaningful because they're to do with mindfulness and that kind of thing. They're achievable. So you're not trying to do something that's too hard for you to do. Um, Realistic is another aspect of that. And then time-based. So you've got a certain time where you're going to actually do this action. And that will help you to to take action. Uh, You may have heard the acronym before. And then after you've done that, reflect. Now, I want an, an extra tip on this is think about how, after you've set this goal, let's say it's to do this Zoom account thing, you can ask yourself, okay, how committed am I on a scale of one to 10, 10 being fully committed to actually doing this action. And if it's anything less than 10, then ask yourself, okay, what can I do to to make it into a 10 out of 10? See if you can get as close as possible to being fully committed to doing the action so that you have pretty much no doubt in your mind, you're definitely gonna do it. So reduce those barriers. Another tip for, for building confidence, another approach is to actually not teach on your own, but teach with others. So there's maybe some other more experienced mindful teacher or another teacher at a similar stage to you. And if you get together, it can make it easier. You don't have to have such high levels of confidence or high levels of courage to be able to do it. It will be, it will make it simpler. You can lean on each other and it can create a better class because you've got to do two different people teaching from slightly different angles. Um, so yeah, no, that is recommended if you can teach with others. Next tip is to actually build your skills in teaching mindfulness. Maybe you did your mindfulness teacher training a long time ago, or you never actually have done one fully. And so that could be the reason why there's a lack of confidence there, because if there is actually, uh, there is some lack of skill that you need to develop. So you might want to do a course or a class that could help. Sometimes for some people, they just keep doing courses, 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 but never actually take the action. Uh, so if that's you, then maybe that may not be the case. It may be about uh, using some of the other strategies I've shared. And then the last couple of things that come to mind if you want to build confidence. One may be to get a coach. So you could work one-to-one with someone um, who may be specializing in this area and they will maybe may be able to support you to build your confidence and take action and they can be like your supporter. Or what's I'm more of a fan of these days is being part of a community. And so the whole community is there together with you and you're working together, you're learning together, you're growing together. Uh, It's kind of more accessible price wise as well, because you're all together as part of a group rather than doing just one to one. And it's an ongoing growth. So then, you know, you'll be able to tap in to work with other mindful teachers and, and build your confidence that way as you work with each other. So that's what our, uh, I mentioned that because that's what our, our Teach Mindfulness Academy is about. It's about working together as mindfulness teachers 
to build our confidence and to build our skills to teach mindfulness as well. So you can check that link out if you are a mindfulness teacher. Uh, thanks so much for listening. And uh, the next episode, I'm going to talk about ACT and how it enables more creative mindful classes, acceptance and commitment training, and how it creates the space for us to be offering more creative mindful classes, but still with the strong underlying evidence-based.